Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. And I can't choose why I want to say. Hey, hey, folks. Here we are. Lunch Stuff Studios 4? 3? Is that right? Two, or did we change it? 1. I thought it was changed action. at some point. I we don't know. changed it to like Jizz Come House. Oh, yeah. House. Uh, we did Jizz Come House. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, JCH. What is it? All right. I don't know. Jizz Come House is horrible coffee. But, <laughs> uh, Great horror movie, though. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Um, Juan Valdez, remember him? He would smell each bean. That was big. Oh, yeah. He was cute. Commercials were a thing. He used to go, oh, the Wendy's commercial. Waza for Bud Wise. <laughs> that was big because it took so long to unfold. It was like a yes. five minute commercial. It was just like, Bud. Bud. <laughs> that was really fun. That was clever. Yeah. I'm going to say that was 95 ish. Oh, yeah. I think it was a Super Bowl. And Big it, Super Bowl. It popped, oh, yeah. yeah. Commercials were huge. Where's the beef? I mean, that's that's 80s. But uh, they were out there. There was a, a commercial that I loved. I don't even know what it was for, but it was a guy who snuck into the football huddle. I think about it all the time. Mm. And he's wearing the helmets too big, and he's oh, a big yeah. goof. And uh, at one point he says, uh, does your mouthpiece taste like banana? <laughs> and uh, I remember thinking it was like the funniest thing. I don't get it. It was a bunch of big guys. Why well, he's just saying a bunch of things. Oh. Like he's like clearly doesn't belong there. I That's see. It's a funny I thing see. for a football player in the huddle in the middle of it to be like, "Does your mouthpiece taste like banana?" Oh, I, I thought it was a banana bit. No, like he took the wrong thing or something. Uh, no, I think it was just a thing of like he's in there going, what, "What's going on here? What are you guys up to?" Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, had great commercials with Sports Center. They'd be in the office throwing Ooh, a ball. Yeah, they that, were like sketches. Yeah, they were sketches. That was fun. Did you ever wear Skechers? I can't do it. No. There's a couple of shoes I go, that ain't for me. It's embarrassing. I had to check Chuck's shoes as I said it, just to, I didn't want yeah. to start trashing them. Well, those are no joke, but. Those are the Back to the Futures. Yeah. I think New Balance, Nike, Adidas, Reebok, and the rest, it's too complicated, like the rock stars. You know, I can't do it. We got these, uh, the, the LA gear. I never oh, got with the lights in it. God, I, these those... kids with the lights. What are you, special needs? Lights? Whoa. As soon as someone brought out LA gear, I just, they were off, off the, the, the phone list. Yes, yes, Hell yes. Year. What about uh, BK Knights? Oh, yeah. God. Wasn't he in Nucus in the Block? I think he was, yeah. <laughs> Brian Cranston <laughs> Knight? Oh, 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 oh. What was that other one? There was another one that was big. Uh, Fila. Fila. Remember them? Yeah, Fila, I Cop think I was Fila. into for a second. But I think those were for black people. I think a lot of that was, yeah, yeah. The Fubus and the. Uh, there's a couple other ones that were big. Fubu. I don't mind a Puma. It was oh, Puma's Puma. not bad. Puma's, Puma's not bad. cute. I like Puma on a girl. A little petite Ooh. feet with a little Puma sneak. That's fun. Yeah. Um, what about uh, Asics are, are good, too. I'll take an Asics. Asics is okay, yeah. Um, and then there's Brooks. That's a big running sneaker. I don't know Brooks. Brooks is big in the running community. Ah, okay. Brooks was here. And then there's... Uh, so was Red. Oh, what's that other one? You, you said... You said Brooks, and it, it made me uh, lose Brooks, it. Sacconi. Uh, oh, Sacconi. Those uh, Sacconi. Is it Sacconi or Sacconi? I don't know. I never said it out loud. I was too scared. <laughs> but those are those look kind of cool. They were too cool for me. Yeah, Sacconi, Sacconi. I went I like, to school with a Joe Sacconi. Sacconi Chung. I like a DC once in a while. Yeah, DC. That's, that's all skate, though. Uh, yeah, Chocolate Cite. I'll, I'll wear them next time. I got some high tops I like. <laughs> okay, well, are they higher than those? Because those are hitting your knees. Uh, maybe a little bit. 10% right. higher. Okay. High tops, if you're not in the basketball court, I don't quite understand what's going on with the high top. <laughs> it's a little high. <laughs> I don't care about the high top. <laughs> I'm sticking with the uh, the, the paisanos myself. <laughs> I don't. There's a there's a war going on with the the top of the shoe and the pant leg. It's too much. They're crumpled. They're queefed. They got to tuck it in or put it over. It's too much. I, it's funny how there's just things that skipped your 
brain. Yes. The sneaker heads. I just never got it. I'm like, I, I don't know what's going on there. The 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 hair people, they, they got to have a certain a shave and a fade every ah, day. The fade, yeah, yeah. I just, shave I mean, a haircut. we've talked about it before. I'm like, I've been wearing running sneakers, blue jeans, and a t-shirt for, <laughs> since I was uh, three years old. Oh, yeah. Never looked back. I, I get out of the shower. I toss the hair back. I've never had one phase the only change that i've seen you make since i've known you is herpes uh, uh big sober one. and new glasses yeah those were all tough decisions well i had a manager i had the wiry ben franklin oh uh, yeah, those were rough they were bad and they yeah. were crusty and muddy and then i got a new manager maureen Tarrant. oh she's a good egg and the first i didn't understand show business the first thing she said she's like you gotta get new glasses these are atrocious yeah, people are it. laughing at you little pedophile little librarian it's like it's embarrassing <laughs> You look like a piece of shit. People are scared of you. The kids are running. And I was like, what the fuck? I remember coming home from a meeting being like, these managers, they're telling you what glasses to wear. Yeah. Get me on TV, you bitch. Yeah. And then you look back and you're like, no, that's what a manager does. Yes. The manager's like, you look ridiculous. She's managing you. Yes. Get something. Change your life. They don't just put you on TV. Oh, dude. I mean, we know a guy. I'm not going to say his name, but he uh, he went into a manager's office. I said, you got to get new teeth. And he got he got veneers. Oh no! Yeah, no offense. Um, oh god, I gotta, get this, is, I gotta get this manager. <laughs> well, your mouth is small enough. I think you can you can cover those piano keys you got there. Well, but, uh, I got the big mic. I hold the mic. What's yeah, up? There you I'm go. Like, I'm like, welcome to the comedy connection, everybody. Uh, yeah, yeah. But the mouth that. That's unique, Steve Buscemi. He said, if I had uh, fixed my teeth, I wouldn't have gotten any parts. That's so a I'm good going point. for the, 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 this guy's disgusting parts. And I agree. We're in the business of you can be the fattest piece of shit. You can be the baldest. You can be the ugliest. And that's your thing. So yes. in comedy, it's good. Yeah, I'm the teeth guy. There you go. There you go. There we go. All right. Small Plus, mouth. It, it hurt. You got to move your teeth. I'm sorry, Who I wants to move teeth? I had braces for five, six years. It was a fucking nightmare. Five years? Oh, six yeah. Years. I mean, into high school, eighth, uh, seventh, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh. I mean, these are formative years, fatty. I, I'm getting spit on by women. I had them in eighth and ninth grade, and then as soon as I took them off, they just went yeah, right back. Yeah, well, It was horrible. So I have braces and crooked teeth. That's the worst. Oh, uh, you got rooked. I had. They were like, "You're you're a piece of shit." Railroad mouth, you sure, scumbag. And then it now it's, "Hey, pet cemetery mouth, what the fuck is this?" Sure, sure. So, <laughs> wow, you got fucked. You got the worst of both. They fucked me. I mean, I did an old bit about it because there was like they left like these weird glue stains. Oh, uh, the and, glue. And they were like. Um, the dentist was like, well, that can come from braces. I'm like, a side effect of braces is crooked yellow teeth? Uh, <laughs> and then there was something else to that joke. I can't remember the rest. But. I'll tell you, my orthodontist office was uh, it was out in Metairie, which is like the suburb of New Orleans. Like all the rich white flight moved there. Mm. And the orthodontist looked like Jay Peterman. He was like a handsome guy, tall with flowy white hair. Every dental hygienist, assistant, whatever they are, were smoke shows. It was like the diner scene. They're like, you know wow. something uh, in common with all these waitresses? Russ Meyer. Yes, yeah, it's all huge cans popping out of the uh, top of the scrubs. Wow. And, you know, as a 14-year-old, you're like, I'm drooling. She's like, we need the sucky thing. I'm like, yes, yeah, sucky. And my dad would always be like, I'll bring it. Wow, I wonder if they're still there. Maybe I should go down there and get them straightened. Spend a couple of years in uh, Exeter or whatever. What did you say it was called? Metairie. Metairie. Yeah. Metairie. <laughs> um, ah, Metairie. Yeah, but it was wild. I mean, it was uh, it was a hot, it was like a Maxim ad in there. Boy, Maxim was cool. By the way, someone gave us those Playboys from from uh, the Seinfeld episode. Yeah. yeah. Once in a while, I'll thumb through it. I'm like, this is a great idea. What, tits? <laughs> I mean, that's a that's kind of a winner. No, Playboy. Oh. Like I'm reading. There's some good article. They got an interview yeah, with whoever, articles. and then there's a bunch of put. Like you read an article, you flip the page, and there's beaver and, and nipples. Uh, you can't lose. I'm like, what are we talking about? This is like the best idea ever. Now, apparently, Hugh was a little uh, rough around the edges, but well, Hugh's a bad guy. I mean, what? He's a bad seed. What do you want me to do? Shoot him? Uh, but <laughs> but still, I mean, Playboy, bring it back. I yeah. guess the internet now. Well, the article, that was the big joke. I read the articles, but the articles were amazing. So you get tits, and then you're like, oh, this is the best stereo system to buy? This is the coolest car? This is the nice suit? You can't lose. I still think we had a good idea there with the Playboy After Dark show. Yeah, we were trying to recreate it. We did it once at Fap. Like We invited 
uh, industry, and it really, uh, it really laid an egg. It was bad. Yeah, that was a real kick in the dick. But, but we had uh, an idea that was good. It was good. We had the hot guy shirtless who was ripped. We had uh, dirty questions, interviews. It was fun. It was like the Playboy Mansion show, Hugh Hefner, but instead of hot babes, we had hot men. We objectified the men. Exactly. To make it a little more, you know, PC or whatever. It's good for the goose is good for the gander. But we, we dressed up, and everyone's dressed in heels and the shirtless. But it just it didn't it didn't take well it didn't it wasn't clear what we were doing it was just like why is that guy shirtless you guys aren't hot it was too confusing you should yeah, do it I, Tuesdays after dark we should try it. Do it. we That's should what, try it again well, we'll do it again yeah we should try it again because I think also Bobby was on and, uh, and, and he he didn't get it so he was kind of making fun of it and then yeah. the waiter just came up and stood there Nick who looked great mm. but it didn't it didn't come Neat. off and you can't we had to do it in a controlled environment yes yeah. yes it was a little sloppy and uh, we didn't pull it off but you know it was the early phases early in- infancy it's always mm. funny when you're like this will sell and then they left being like what the hell was that i think that's most of my ideas i'm like this will be good then the one you're like this stinks that one hits oh, yeah. right very strange. What a wacky biz. But now you just got to make your own shit and fuck your own ass. Now we just make it ourselves. We could shoot it, chuck oh, it, yeah. edit it for a couple years, and yeah. then we'll have it out by the time. <laughs> yeah, 2028. <laughs> yeah. All right, Chuck E. Um, but, uh, yeah, that maybe we should, should be the 6,000 goal on the Patreon. Uh-huh. Hey. When we hit 6,000, we'll do it Tuesdays after dark live. Now what are we at cooking. right now for patrons? Probably like 5,200. 5,200. Right. Hey, okay. 800 people. Get on. Yeah. Join the page. By the way, Chuck went in oh, while boy. we were all gone. Chuck went in <laughs> after hours and and organized everything. You How pulled... many things are on there? Well, we're gonna, we're, I want to figure out a way to really kind of succinctly say it but there's like almost 300 exclusive audio episodes almost Come 100 on. videos but like what was cool is now you can go on the Tuesday's Patreon and just search any comedian that's been on and every one of their appearances that's will insane. show up wow so Robert Kelly wow Burt Kreischer Amy Schumer shows up in a live yeah, episode Michelle, Michelle Wolf, Wolf Danner Nikki Stan Soder Glazer, Dan Nikki Soder yes, yes everybody's in there Ari you know who you are you're the Marie Kondo of podcasting. Who's, who's that again? You organize. You know, you bring joy, you bring yeah. organization. Oh, right, right. She's I came the, in, uh, the Asian lady. We dumped right. some of the garbage. Yeah. Let's just say that. Yeah. 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 yeah, stuff you couldn't say, you know, all that. You got rid of it. You kept it open closet, and then you came out of it. Yeah. So if we get to 6,000 patrons, we'll do the after dark. And if we get to 7,000, we'll snap Chuck's microphone in two. Yeah. Ooh. 7,000 patrons. Well, that's a gimme. If we I mean, get to 7,000. We're going to get to 20,000 We'll here. cut the cord on his microphone. 8,000 voice box removed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, 9,000, you come in, you fuck his, his larynxless mouth. Yes, and you fuck his little trollops he's got hooking up at his house. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, so yeah, that's well, one goal at a time here. But yeah, uh, sure. we got people creating accounts just yeah. to get in there. Yeah, I know you're a goner. Uh, yeah, but, but everything's organized now, so you can you can see how many Musqueef TVs we have and how many bonuses, and it's outrageous. I think that before it was tough to know what exactly. was on there. People that aren't on the Patreon, they're like, I don't know what's on there. There's literally like. I don't know how many hours of, of content, but I'd Hell say yeah. over over five hundred maybe with wow. everything. You know, it's crazy. Best yeah. Patreon in the biz. Yeah, it's something we do. We go through all the old Seinfelds. We do Q and A's on that. We got the Stranger by the Lake thing is oh. on there. Every live episode we've ever done. That Austin one with Bennington and Chris D. Oh. That was like There's probably like, the greatest wow. episode ever. I forgot about that. There's like seventeen live episodes, which I was surprised to know. I thought there was only going to be like six, but there's seventeen live episodes. We've got with extra comics every time. Soul Joel's. We got the L.A. Improv. Of, yes. I mean, we're all over the road. Bad Plus, Hockey Sets, the documentary series. Oh, That's, Hockey Sets is over five hours long for that. Wow. For that. Wow, series. look at this. It's crazy. What a steal. It's all documentary for three bucks. Yeah, for three dollars. For three dollars, we fucked up. We fucked <laughs> we up. That fucked was my up. stupid idea. It was oh, we'll do it for three because that three is better than five. I'm an idiot. Well, you guys are getting a steal, and Gillis is a dollar, so we're not that stupid. We're not as stupid uh, as him. No, no, he doesn't do that anymore. I heard. Ah, we're was, stupid again. Well, it was good. Because I saw a comment on the Patreon that's like, now that they don't have, you know, Gillis doesn't have the dollar anymore. This is the cheapest and best Patreon out there. Cheapest, wow. best deal in town, fatties. $3. It's cool. this, this this cup of tea costs $4.08. <gasps> Ooh, you got ripped. What's cool is if, 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 if people so are like invested in you guys, 
the old stuff of the gre- of the green room hangs and the then the uh, what's it called when you guys would go out and do it satellite queefs. Oh, oh yeah, they're yeah. really oh, that's they're, how it all started. It's all your career stuff. It's like you guys like Joe and Robert Kelly driving. It's you and Chris Allen like across the country. <laughs> oh, that was a crazy one. Wow, oh, wait, <laughs> that sounded like shit. your asshole tore open. <laughs> yeah, I know that was that's crazy. crazy. <laughs> they should have put you that wanna, on the Patreon. To pause it? Jesus that Christ. started as a fart and then the asshole Ooh, ripped oh, open. I'm gonna get some paper towel. That yeah, was like, please. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, that man. sounded like a, a creature from Star Wars swallowed Luke. Yeah, if we get to 9,000, I'll do a colonic on <laughs> air. <laughs> Oof, well, that was bad news, Bears. That... Woo wee! Oh, <laughs> Yikes, a Rooney. Christ. We're in a three All by right. three room. All right, we got to get into it because. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You got a lot, I, from All what right. I understand. I mean, you did the big, oh, the big yeah. pod, which is why we were a day late yeah, last sorry, week. Sorry, folks. Not me. Yeah, my <laughs> fault. Fucking jerk-offs. My fault. I got like three different people being like, I know it was you. It was like Fredo at New Year's Eve. Yeah, well, Joe's going to rob a bank in the 20s, but uh, hold on here. Yeah, that was my fault. I was late. I had to do the big, the big you-know-what. The Kramer um, lane might move on. Yeah. She's late. <laughs> so... <laughs> Let me just get to a couple things here. Please. Uh, Tuesdays with Stories, folks, is also brought to you by ExpressVPN. Use the internet without Express... Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like leaving your keys in your car while you run into the gas station for a snack. Most of the time, you're probably fine, but what if you come back to see someone else driving off with your car? That would stink. Every time you connect to an unencrypted network, like at hotels and airports, any hacker on the same network can gain access to your personal data. That is terrifying. It doesn't take much technical knowledge to hack someone. A 12-year-old could do it. Encryption creates a secure tunnel between your device and the internet. It's encrypted so hackers can steal your sensitive data. I use this. That's why I use it. Because I, you know, I I don't want anyone to know where I've been on the internet. I mean, I've been all over town. I'm, I'm... I'm looking up, uh, you know, men who wear dresses, lipstick on a lady. I, I, I don't want this getting out there. No. <clears throat> so uh, when I'm using ExpressVPN, I know I'm getting the best protection. It's like having a junkyard dog with me online. You know what I mean? Yes. If someone's trying something, they got it. They're on it. This stuff is great. You got to use it. I'd take a hacker with a supercomputer over a billion years to get past my ExpressVPN encryption. It's easy to use. Here, here. Fire up the app and click one button to get protected. And it works on all devices, folks. Phones, laptops, tablets, desk lamp. You can always stay safe. Secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash Tuesdays. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash Tuesdays and get an extra three months free. Expressvpn.com slash Tuesdays. Here, here. Fume. Tuesday's story is brought to you by Fume. Fume is a safe way to quit smoking. Fume's 100% Canadian maple handcrafted inhaler is made to replace the hand to mouth habit. That is a problem. Simply insert one of their non addictive flavored cores. Fume's cores come in dozens of flavors like peppermint and lemon, uh, berry bliss. Love the berry bliss. I think it's great. The, the little pipe is so cute. I like to chew on it, it's fun. You just want something in your mouth, folks. That's all it's about. And the flavors are great. There's no smoke, no vape, and no nicotine to worry about, even if you're not trying to quit smoking. Fumes cores can help with relaxation, energy, and more. Yeah, I just keep it on me and play with it whenever. Good to puff on it. Whether you're a smoker or an ex-smoker who still struggles with cravings, Fume is the perfect tool for you. Head to breathefume.com slash Tuesdays. Use promo code TUESDAYS to save 10% off your entire order. Save money by eliminating cigarettes and save on your initial purchase of Fume. That's 10% off your entire order at breathefume.com slash TUESDAYS. Uh, B-R-E-A-T-H-E-F-U-M dot com slash TUESDAYS. Get on it! First off, I want to give a shout out to Chomp, the restaurant in Providence, Rhode Island, that had us oh, after hours, open bar, open Ooh. food. We ate like kings, we queefed like queens, and uh, the food was great, the booze was great. 
The people were great, so go eat there. I think you're opening a new one. What are we talking, though? Steakhouse, burgers? It's like uh, gourmet burgers, super upscale. He got a salmon burger. Unreal. Oh, Very good. The wings were wicked good. The fries were incredible. They give a shit, too. You know, you're dipping. They have the eight sauces. I'm dipping. He's like, that one is made homemade in my apartment. That's my jizz. That's oh, yeah. my placenta. I was like, this guy gives a shit. Wow. Yeah, they, I'd love to eat some jizz. Nikki Holden is uh, one of the chefs there, and she reached out to me that day, and she's like, do you think Mark would be interested in coming for a private party at Chomp Afterwards, and wow. I was like, "Yes, he would." You give me free That's food, amazing. I'll eat your ass. So bring it on. Weird that like a, a salmon burger is off-putting to me. Like salmon is one of my favorite foods. I love a fillet. I want mm. a salmon, but I'm like, but a burger is a burger. I don't want a salmon burger. Give it a shot. Like I want to eat jizz, but I want a jizz burger. No, you don't want that. It's too much bread. It's not enough. Uh, <laughs> it's not a good uh, ratio. <laughs> yes. It's weird how food is like that. You know, like this way is great, but if you. Do this, it sucks. Yeah, I'm trying to think of other examples. Uh, you know, oh, like uh, like a tuna melt. People are like, that's horrific, but it's just cheese on tuna. Mm-hmm. But you're like, I love cheese, I love tuna, but together, yeah, maybe that's a bad example. <clears throat> I know what you mean, but like, and then there's like, on a cheeseburger, you got cheese and you put ketchup on it. But any other situation, ketchup on cheese is weird. Oh, interesting. Like macaroni and cheese with ketchup? Ah, a pizza with ketchup? Yeah, you got a point. Cheese and ketchup, no good. But cheese and ketchup on a burger, pretty good. Pretty great, yeah. Even pickle hmm. and cheese. You wouldn't put a pickle and cheese, but a cheeseburger with a pickle is great. Yeah, interesting. You'd never wrap a pickle in a pickle spear and cheese. Like it's a craft stick. cheesy. <laughs> All right. All right. So, so you ate a chump. Chomp was great. But now let me get back to West Palm Beach PBI Improv. So it's a it's a slog. It's a tough week. It's a great club, but it's just a bunch of animals out there. It's Florida, baby. These guys are rich, they're drunk, and they're Floridians. Florida is just such a mishmash of, like, Cubans, old people, Jews, uh, like, Hulk Hogan. It's everything. Yeah, the Bushwhackers, too. Yes, and the Bush women. <laughs> so, uh... We get down there, and it's Friday Late Show. And you go, ah, Friday Late Show, notoriously bad. But you know what? That's a myth. What are you going to do? And Brittany Brave is hosting. She's great. She goes up, and I always do the, uh, like, she comes off. She's a goddamn tornado up there. She just whips them into shape, and she comes off. She's, like, sweating. She's like, they're a little rowdy. And I'm like, bad? She's like, bad. I don't want to say bad, but they're a little they're a little on edge. And okay. you're like, okay, okay. So this guy, the feature, Carl Remy, killer, just a beast. Never heard of him. He just came out swinging. Great comic. He goes up and he's doing well, but he's doing like the all right, can we can we cool it here? Let me let me finish this bit. You know, a lot mm. of that stuff. And I'm like, uh. So he gets off and he's like, not my favorite. Everybody's trying to be nice. Right. You don't want to just go, they're a nightmare. They're hell on wheels. It's the Holocaust out there. So they go, ah, you know, what are you going to do? Right. So, Steamy Remy. So I go up, and this is the part about headlining that's a cunt. First, you get the check spots. Yep. Also, they're drunker. Mm-hmm. Your night has, their night has has elongated like an hour, and it's yes. just sitting down and doing shots. So I get to the front. And they're already hooting and hollering. You know when you're walking to the stage and you hear people talking? You're like, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm fucked out of the gate. Yes. So I look down, front row, there's a just a long table of hot twinks. Shirts mm. open up to here, you know, uh, chest hair, the, the necklaces, the, the slicked hair, all this shit, cool Hawaiian shirts, sexy ripped guys. They're all probably 19. Uh, head of the table is this fat gay guy with a crazy floral shirt all the way open. And on my first walk up, my first uh, impression is him holding a bottle of Patron and doing this. Oh, my God. Finishing it. A bottle? A bottle. That squarey kind of fat bottle. Oh, my God. And I'm like, well, this is going to be rough. What and, kind of club lets you just have a bottle of Patron at well, the table? I mean, he's he's in VIP. He's insanely rich. Uh. So they're like, we're selling bottles of this fucking douche wow so he's a fat gay guy and he's nice and he's cute and he's rich and i'm like all right buddy you're all right he's like am i all right you know i'm talking full-on mel brooks broadway gay guy wow you know broadway gay and these are this are all his horde of of just uh sexy little men yeah that sounds like a fantasy my wife's out of town but yeah yeah he's just got a table of otters here and they're all doing uh, his beck and call so i'm just trying to stay in line and every joke he liked he would go 
like that. Like fucking Springsteen's drummer or sax guy. What's his name? Clarence Clemens. Thank you, CC. Welcome back, Otter. And he's high-fiving all of his little gaggle of, of cute men, and they're all like, they love him, and he's he's the alpha. And uh, I'm just like, what is going on? And I keep doing like the, hey, anybody want to help me out here to the staff? You're like, this is getting out of hand. And then my first 20 minutes, I come out guns blazing, and then I like to dial it back and do some maybe a little... Th- thoughtful stuff, maybe a bit about anxiety or, you know, a bit about family. And, you know, it's not just like dick, dick, dick. Mm-hmm. And that's where I, the whole thing goes off the rails. Oh, right boy. when I let off the gas, they they scatter. He gets another bottle. Anytime the waiter comes by, he's doing this. Excuse me, excuse me. Uh. So now he's got a new bottle of Patron. He gets up and he's walking around the floor, pouring it into people's mouth. What? I'm telling you, Fatty. This is like, I can't even describe the chaos I'm dealing with. I'm, I'm babysitting here. What kind of club is this? Well, they're like a party nightclub thing vibe in there. But is Tampa the only good comedy town in Florida? It feels like that because Miami's a nightmare. Nightmare. It sounds like Palm Beach sucks. It's tough. I don't want to shit on the club. It's a good club. The staff is nice. But this is all the way, it's a 500 seater, 500 plus. This guy's all the way in the front. So there are, the security's all in the back, just like, hmm. I'm like, it's all happening right here, but they don't see it. I mean, so, I, I, this is so frustrating, because I, I mean, I, don't, I haven't been booked at this club, so maybe I can step it's in It's a here. huge room. But I mean, how is someone not stopping a guy from walking around serving drinks? I don't think that's legal. I think that's that might what, be a law. Well, not in Florida. That's not, Florida, but. baby. They don't give a shit. They got bath salts. So Jesus Christ. I wanted to pull an Orlando shooting and just mow the place <laughs> down, but this is out of control. So the guy's pouring shit in people's <laughs> mouth, and I go... Hello! Like, I turn to the gay guy, I'm like, Hello! Anyone here? This is out of control. Oh my God. And finally, security comes by and they just sit him down and they're like, pat him on the head. And he's like, Whoa, what are you going to do? He jerks oh. the guy off and then the guy goes back to the back. And I'm like, Come on! I'm pouring sweat. I, I feel like I got eight children running around in an apartment and I'm like, one of them's lighting the stove on fire, one of them's putting a knife in the, the outlet, you know? Oh. It was bananas and you just lose them every setup. They just kind of trail off and they go back they're like this is boring what are you up to should i blow you you want to do another shot and just the amount of booze so here's the clinker i go i do an hour half of it is just going hey what are you going what's going on here put that down shut up stop that and i get off stage i'm like <sighs> so then management walks in okay. and they're like we're so sorry which was very nice like, they actually gave a fuck, and they're like, hey, we're sorry, that was crazy. Uh, we didn't really know what to do. We weren't sure if we should throw him out and make a scene. Right, like, right. The scene was made. He made the scene. It would have been two minutes of awkwardness throwing him out, and then it would have been fine. Right. You take it I like a it. Band-Aid. It's tricky sometimes, because then they think, oh, maybe he's having fun with it. Maybe I he's know. getting laughs. Plus, if they throw him out, he's going to, you know... Throw a fit. It's the whole front table. It's right. always an issue when it's the person in the front. <laughs> always an issue. And he paid for the VIP tickets. He paid for his whole gaggle. Who knows what he spent on booze? So I get it. They don't want to just be probably like a returning customer. So I'm in the in the green room steaming, and they go, you going to sell shirts? Because I sell shirts after every show. And I'm like, I can't do it. I'm just too wiped. I'm too angry. If I see that guy, he's going to go, I was just laughing. Ah, you know. Right. And I'm going to be like, ah, I can't handle it. So in walks the feature after like 45 minutes of selling shirts and dealing with the crowd. He's like, what the hell happened, man? They were all asking for you out there. I'm like, I couldn't do it. He goes, the gay rich guy bought all of my merch and he didn't take any of it. He was like, he had boxes of merch. He's like, how much for all this? And he was like, "Uh, hold on. I don't know. Eight grand. And he goes, here's eight grand. What? And then he didn't take any shirts. I was like, I could have sold everything. He just handed him eight grand. Wow. Maybe not eight grand, but whatever it was. I mean, this is insane. insane. I got to get this guy to my show. I know. I mean, for eight grand, you could pour tequila in my asshole and have sex with my dad in front of me. I figured the guy was, uh, you know, out riding fences and, and blowing a horse. I didn't think he would be out there buying shit. Wow. This guy just sounds like something else. I mean, I yeah. want to meet this fella. There should be a film about him. He was a kingpin or a queenpin, but this guy, I mean, he was nutso. He was bonkos. <laughs> and... I'm telling you, this guy's bonkos. I got double fucked, like your teeth and the braces thing, because the show was was a fucking nightmare. And then I could have 
sacked up and gone out there and sold everything, but I didn't, and I got fucked there. Ah, oh, Jesus but, Christ. But this feature, uh, Steamy Remy's like living the high life. He killed it. He was great. And I'm glad he made the money. The guy's putting out a film called uh, I Possessed. So he's doing a lot. Of, I told him all about your thing. He's doing a uh, YouTube movie. Good for him. I Possessed? Yeah. All right. I'll check it out. Yeah. That yeah. way, Remy. Yeah. Made it with his own money, the whole thing. Yeah. So. He made it with this gay fella's money. <laughs> yes. Apparently. So, but the club was very cool. They would apologize and they're like, whatever you want. And so they did a beautiful thing, which I've never seen a club do. This is, this is why it's a great club. They go, the room is huge. We're going to sit a bouncer in the front of the stage, just oh. sitting there looking at the crowd, much like an arena show. Yeah. You know, they do that. So. Sure. So that was a game changer. And then Saturday night, both shows were amazing. Just having that guy there and people would be like, what are you getting? You getting the steak or the lobster? And he goes, shh. Ah. And I was like, oh my god! I, I want to hire a guy to do this every show. Yeah, well, you're you were you initiated. You changed the game. Yes. Well, you know, it took a it took a big ass rape to happen, but we got it to happen. And let me ask you this, there, sloppy jalopy. What do you think about the check spot? A lot of co- a lot of clubs go whatever you want. You want Don P. You you sold out. You added a show. You want uh, pick up in the limo. And you what? What about just saying I want no checks? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this is a, a classic thing. I did my album at Buffalo Helium two albums ago or three, whenever it was, and they were like, because you're recording an album, no checks. Exactly. And the week I don't know what what went on, but the weekend came and went and the club's still there. So I'm like, couldn't you do that? Can you just pretend everyone's recording an album every week? I don't I, get it. Well, I think they don't like doing it. They have all these little dumb rules, but I think they're like, we've done it for 30 years this way. We just don't want to change. I got to yeah. retrain the wait staff. I got to get a bouncer in the back now. And some clubs do it. I know. So I, I don't know. It's very frustrating. And uh, it the check spot is easier when you sell tickets because they're mindful. Sure, they, will, sure. they don't want to miss it. Agreed. It's like if I went to a Pearl Jam show and someone came over and was like, yo, 50 bucks, I'd be like, oh, oh here, you, here you go. Yeah, yeah, take yes. it. Yes. You know, so I think that helps. That but does But still, help. it's frustrating. And I always talk about last call is tough, too. Yeah. Because it's like, last call, you want a drink? You want one more? Who wants one more? Completely you agree. One? So it's just tricky. But, um, I mean, you're doing theaters soon, so this will all be in the past. And I'll tell you, you do that. I like to pepper in a theater because you still need that club humbleness. But uh, the theater, there's no wings. There's no check. There's no uh, drink order. I mean, it's really a dream. Yeah, that uh, that checks when the, those checks come out. It's t- and some clubs will even do it like a quadrant at a time. Yeah, I like love they, the quadrant. Here you get it, so they they get finished. But yeah, it's tricky. I don't think people understand. Like, yeah, non comics understand how how crazy it is. I know when those it's, checks come. It's a fascinating way to treat art. Not to sound like a queef, but uh, it's like. Imagine doing that during Les Mis. Like, oh, I know. Oh, hold on, let me come around. You had the Mai Tai. Oh, you didn't pay enough. Your credit card didn't go through. Sorry. Blah blah blah. It's like, what are we doing here? Yeah, it's a little silly. I think it could. Uh, I think it could end. But I do hate uh, this club. Sounds great, but I do hate when immediately afterwards they're like, "We're so sorry." You're like, so you're aware something was going on? Ah, uh, yeah. It's. T- I don't want to pry because the club was very nice and they were cool. But it was a real kick in the dick where you're like. I don't know. I'm a I'm an entertainer. You gotta like this shouldn't be a party atmosphere. Yes. But what the hell do I know? I hear you. All right. Very frustrating. He hears. Uh You're here. They're there. So after that, you ever have this? Now this is I'm gonna get a little vulnerable here at Air Fatties, but All right. uh I think after the bachelor party, after Florida, after Martha's Vineyard, after the mushrooms, I went into this wild Rut. Ah, the rut. The slump. Hate a slump. Night in the ruts. The head is foggy. You can't think of anything. You're not getting any sleep. You're sad. You're just cloudy and 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 bummery. Yeah, well, it happens. I mean, first of all, it's like you're, you're out of whack. Out of you're whack. not in any kind of routine. People need yes. some kind of routine, stability, sleep. You need it. You crave it. It's on a it's a molecular level. Yes, molecular. And you have that. And then you also have that come down of like I've been traveling all over. That has come and gone. That was so much fun. I didn't even have time to reflect and take it in. Yep, yep. And, and you got the shows and the meet and greet and the travel and I'm having a thing right now where Sarah's out of town for a month. It's been wow. a week. And it throws you off 
kilter because you're used to coming home and, yes. you, and, you, and you, we call it podcasting. You do a little podcast. You're like, then this happened. That was crazy. And this was happening. That was wild. You have sex. You sleep next to a person. Yes. And it throws you off kilter. Totally. Time and, changes, early flights, nap on a flight. And I'm throwing poison on top of all this, by the way. Yes, of course. And then you have this thing of like, what's it all for? That was a blur. Is this anything? Does <laughs> this know. mean anything? Plus, we're in our 40s, about to get married, which is traumatic. Of course. I mean, when I was getting married, I was like losing my mind. That's when I was going through all my dental stuff, panic attacks, anxiety. Interesting. Uh, because it's a... it's. Change, good or bad, is traumatic. Of course, Even a good change. It's a shift. It's a big shift. So it's uh, it's Late trauma, shift. and you're like, what am I doing? I'm I'm committed to this per. This is a huge marriage, and the whole thing about marriage too is like, till death do us part. So like, death is in there. You're like, oh my god, the rest of my life. The re It's the only decision you make that you're like, this is the rest of my life. I mean, for some of us, I mean, you know. <laughs> It's like 60% chance you'll get divorced, but um, I might get divorced this month. My wife's out of town. and uh, Well, did you have the uh, the initial like, hey, I'm out of town for a month. I'm going full Kevin McAllister. You're jumping on the bed. You're drinking Coca-Cola and making chocolate milk and pizza. Oh, I've been sleeping in her pantyhose. I mean, I put them on every night, her, her fishnets, and uh, I try to fit into those heels, but her feet are little. She's yeah, a girl. Asian. But I got bras on. I'm wearing lipstick. I watch tennis. I, I, you know, I'm sitting... I'm sitting like this with thigh highs. I'm doing the, the toe tap. It's quite nice being a woman. It is fun. And Some parts. They're, they're, hitting, they're getting hit by Ray Rice. No, it's great because, you know, you, you change. Ironically, they throw rice at the wedding. Ah. They, not Ray Rice. That uh, elevator hit was fucked up on so many different levels. Because the elevator levels? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Threw it yeah. out there. Yeah. It adds its ups and downs. I was floored. Ah. I don't know. I like it. Yeah. She really uh, pushed his buttons. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't think either any of these are great. Uh, um, well, you know. Tower of Terror. Oh, it was the ride. Yeah, it was an yeah, elevator. Yeah, Remember yeah. that ride? Okay, okay. Wasn't that Disney World or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that slap really lifted her up. Now lift, the lift. Lift. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh -uh. How old anyway. is that reference? By the way? <laughs> um, <laughs> but any jizz. So it, it's it, having her gone. You're like it's exciting because I'm watching. It happens to be the tennis tournament, so I'm watching all tennis without feeling bad of like you want me to put something on. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's bad. that's fun. So that part's nice. But then when it's time for bed, also I, I can't lie. I want to get laid. I want sex. I like sex. We have regular sex. So you're not having sex. That throws you off. Let me ask you this. Please. What percentage of your thoughts are sexual? Because I'm like 40 years old. I think it's still about 78, 79%. Well, even if you try to avoid it, you see a photo, you see a TV thing, you see a lady on the street. It's it's unavoidable. It's just, and it's, I know guys get called creeps and we get called animals and hornballs, but it's in the DNA. It's in the wiring. I know. You see a lady with a leg or a shoulder or a cleave. It's just like. It's all you think about. I mean, your aunt walks in with cleavage. You're like, wow, well, look at those tits. Yeah, it makes you, you may not want to fuck her tits, or you may in my ah. case, but it, it sends you off into tit yes, land. Yes, you go to tit land. It's an easy exit. Titlandia. Uh, but, yes. You know, it, it's it's weird, but yeah, I get, I'm get. i down about you know 30% of the time, but you just have to accept. You're like, this makes sense. People should be down at some point. It would be weird if you were just never down. Wait, what do you mean down? What are you talking sad. about? Sad. Down. Oh, sad. down. I thought you yeah, meant yeah. down to fuck. I, no, I no. We're still talking about fuck. DTF. No, I was bringing it back to the the slump. The you sadness. should be down. Yes. Yes. It's it, it's part of life. Uh, happy and sad are two sides of the same coin. You can't have one without the other. Love and marriage, horse and carriage. Sun and rain, moon and sun. But um, suns. you know, this is a big crazy time in your life. You're starting to go to theaters. You're trying to buy a house. You're getting married. A lot of plates. It's crazy that you're not fucked up more often. Uh -huh. You should be uh, sunk. I a get lot. sunk. I hide it, but I also self medicate, which is a it's short money because it's going to hit you later, harder. You of know, with course. the booze and the the sleeping pills or whatever. Yeah, no, that's all terrible. It doesn't make any sense. It's and, all pipes. Uh, yeah, it's silly. So, yeah, you get you get slumpy, and uh, I, I'm lumpy and slumpy all the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, Slumpy Johnson, but it's a cross to bear. 
Yeah, but you, I mean, you're an inspiration there, Fatty. I mean, the uh, the Zen, the sobriety, the the mindfulness, well, tick not anal. I'm trying, but it's a battle, and I have to battle all these things just to stay near an even keel, uh, just to stay even close. I mean, I went to the Open on uh, Tuesday or last week now, if you're hearing this. But uh, I was there, and I was like, Sarah's out of town. So I was like, I'm just going by myself anyways. No one likes tennis as much as I do that I know of. So I'm like, this way I can run from one match to the other. I can go to the bathroom when I want to go. This is freedom. Sure. That's the way I want. Because often you're like, okay, I know this match. Can we run to this match? People are like, run to another match? What does this mean? Right. So I like the freedom. Love the freedom. But then like five, six hours in, it's this festive atmosphere. And I'm like, I'm the only person here by myself. Yeah. There's no one to enjoy it with. And I always think about Into the Wild, amazing ah. book. Decent movie, sure. Where he scrawls in at the very end before he dies, he writes, "Happiness is only real when enjoyed with others." That was like his dying like thing. And so you're like, "I'm enjoying this," but you're just like, "I wish there was someone to be like, how about that?" Well, that was crazy. It's the balance, you know. You're at home with the thigh highs and the butt plug, and then after four days, you go, "I want someone to watch me put a butt plug in." Exactly, and it's this this battle. This thing was, I'm so drawn to isolation. But what makes you happy is being with other people. But then also that causes all this anxiety because you're like, uh, you're trying to be like, wait, there's a million things I should be doing, but I'm just hanging out. So it's like, it's such a weird balance. Totally. And all of our natural instincts are fucking wrong so often where I'm like, let me drink. That'll make me feel better, but that's not going to help. I'm like, let me isolate, but that doesn't make you feel better. Yep, yep. And... uh, it's very tricky. Life is very difficult. It's tricky, but I think that's a good argument for marriage. Like, sure, it has its downfalls, and you want to kill people, and you hate everybody, but I heard a guy say something, and it stuck with me. You know, obviously, marriage is terrifying and, you know, against every fiber in my being, but I heard a guy say, if you're 50 and you are you don't have a wife or a kid, it's pretty fucking lonely. Yeah, well, I just... Uh, and. I'm sure about this about 80% of our listeners. So uh, <laughs> shout, out, shout out to those unmarried 50 year olds oh, listening to that. They'll get there. Uh, but no, I mean, I have that this week where you're like, I mean, I guess when you're single, maybe you're fucking now with the yeah, Tinder and Grinder. But, but I'm sitting at home being like, I'm, I'm lonely as shit. I'm just sitting there going, oh, really? well, you're ch- picking a movie. It's exciting. But day five, day six, day seven, you're like, well, this is a bummer. Yeah, and uh, you like to have that empathy and and hugs. I love to just sit in a huggy love snug. Love a good a, drugs, not hugs. A foot spoon. I'll spoon the foot. I'll spoon from behind. Uh, Big yeah. spooner, and um, yeah, it's tricky. But at the same time, you want that companionship. But there's also that thing, and you're like, I'd like to fuck every single course, woman there is. Of course, yeah, yeah. You got to weigh that again with the balance, you know. So I like I like how we are comedians. So we have this built in. Uh. Uh, break time mm. with each other. You know, we go on the road. I'm on the road every weekend. Yes. And so, like, I come home and we're not sick of each other. I'm happy to see her. I think that helps. Well, that's what's weird for me is I'm used to being away from my wife a lot, like 30% of the time. But I usually, because I'm on the road. Yeah. On the road alone, I love and I'm used uh, to. You're At working. home alone, Good great movie. film, is... Um, is very bizarre. It's very strange because it feels sure. empty. And then I think about these people who's like, uh, what do you call it? Partners die. Woo! Like I think about Sarah's house sitting right now. And she's like, it's lonely here. It's scary. It's a big house. And I'm like, her mother just lives there. She was married for 50 years. 50 years. And then her husband dies. And she's just like, just doing Sudoku. Oof. It's it's brutal. So and you hear these stories about uh, the the husband dying, the wife will die like a month later because right. that, that was her whole purpose, or or vice versa. And that shit is terrifying. But your tennis thing is a microcosm of life, or or your your living alone thing. It's like, hey, yeah, it's fun in the beginning, but you better have something on the back end, right? But and th- that's marriage. But another thing we have to do is you have to accept that sometimes you're down. This is the problem now, and it's yes. gotten worse with social media and the phones and everything. Oh, because yeah. the moment you feel bored or lonely, you go, oh, let me look at Instagram, which is only making it worse. Again, it's the wrong instinct. Yeah. But so you go, oh, I'm lonely. Let me let me jerk off. Let me let me call a friend. Let me fuck. And sometimes it's like you should just be bored. And that's the way we were as people for years. Of course. You'd work all day, and then you'd just sit and look at the fucking wall i know you'd read a book you'd stare at the sky the sunset you'd talk to your kid whatever it was but yeah now it's you're right it's the immediate 
Uh, I wake up and I go, what, what's what's cooking? Right. You know, and it's a, it's a horrible way to live. And again, on the road, it's all isolation. So you're just on that phone. I'd see the screen time numbers and I'm like, oh, it's so embarrassing. But I'm trying to cope. And when you're not, whether you know it or not, whether it's conscious or subconscious, you're comparing all day because you're looking at other people. Sure. You're going, I wish I was on the ocean. I wish I was selling this many tickets. I wish I had a wife. I wish I could fuck. I wish right. I was skydiving. So you're, you're constantly comparing, and it, 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 it exaggerates the loneliness because everyone on there is having the time of their life. Yeah, yeah. Which, which is also fake. Yes, fake. it's also, you have to remember that too. I mean, there's people that like, I'm like, oh my God. He's at this play. He's selling this play. And then you talk to that person. It's like, I'm at the lowest of my life. And I you're know. like, oh, jeez. Isn't that fascinating? So uh, I try to remind myself, hey, you're doing great. Things are cooking. But weird little things seep in. You read one bad comment, and it, it just uh, snowballs in your asshole. And that's a bitch. But I did what you said. I just accepted. I was like, man, I am in a slump. I'm in a Hilton high rise looking out at West Palm Beach. It's a beautiful town. The sky is blue. And I'm like. In a nightgown, you know, uh, like with the bonbon chocolate on my <laughs> cheeks. And I'm like, what am I doing? And I just sat there and I dealt with it. And it sucks. Yes. It sucks. And you go to Starbucks and you go, hey, I'll have a coffee. And they have no idea. Right. But the whole time you're going, ah, hug me, you fat black lady. I just need a hug, you know. But uh, you get through it. Yeah, you get through it. And, uh, boy, I'd love to hug a fat black lady. Oh, bring it on there, uh, Star Jones or whoever. By the way, the longer you're in a relationship, the more you want to fuck everybody. Yeah. Uh, lesbians, men, oh, the whole thing. Oh, you right, just want to fuck right. everybody. But yeah. uh, well, there's a there's a fun uh, AA slogan, HALT, ooh. which you got to stop, pause, and then the HALT stands for hungry, coming. hungry, angry, lonely, tired. You're probably one of those four things hungry, when you're feeling angry. this. Lonely, tired. Yeah, so those uh, are probably one of the four things you're like, oh, which one of these am I? Maybe you're all four. I like to throw horny in there. I like to say halt. I like that, halt. Because sometimes you're you're horny. Oh, halt works too. Wait, wait, hungry, angry. Lonely. Lonely. Tired. Tired, so no you. They got rid of the you. Doesn't halt have a you? No, I don't all think right. so. I think <laughs> you're thinking of U-Haul. U-Haul. You're thinking of you. That's fault. a different thing. I'm fault. dyslexic. Fault. fault. Yeah. Well, the language is very tricky, but yes. uh, but you know, it's probably one of those things. Maybe you're hungry. Maybe you're angry. Maybe you're lonely. Maybe you're tired. You're probably lonely and tired in this particular yeah, situation. Yeah, a lot of that. A lot Possibly of Possibly horny and hungover. So I got a couple H's myself. Yeah, you got halt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and the booze is no good either. It's just poison. It's a depressant. You're dumping a depressant in your body. Yeah, which is so weird because it makes you happy for 10 minutes. Yeah, it makes you think you're happy. Interesting. Yeah. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Well, speaking of booze, I uh, went on the drunkest show of my life last week. That's why the show is late. So just bopping around. I had, I was, I'm was. i Sarah. I haven't been home in you know, three months. It felt like the bachelor party, Martha's Vineyard, West Palm Beach, Austin. So we leave West Palm Beach. We go straight to Austin, or, or me, me and my horrible thoughts. I land in, I, oh, wait, no. Oh, my God, I forgot about this. A word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Sometimes you can fixate on a problem for so long that you don't take the time to find a solution. It can be tough to train your brain to stay in problem-solving mode when faced with a challenge in life. But when you learn how to find your own solutions, there's no better feeling. A therapist can help you become a better person and a better problem solver, making it easier to accomplish your goals no matter how big or how small. I'm a big believer in therapy. August, all these therapists go out of town, and uh, I wish I was using the better help this past month because I was just waiting for my therapist to come back. And uh, I've been I've been struggling. I've been all over the place. I started doing cocaine again, and uh, you know my, my my uncle and I got in a huge fist fight. I'm so glad my therapist is coming back this week. You got to get some therapy. I know there's a lot of you. Some of you have tweeted at me, commented, written things, and as soon as I hear from you, I think this person needs therapy. You know what you need? You need better help. It's online therapy that offers video, phone, and chat therapy sessions. You can choose not to see anyone on camera if you want, if you're as ugly as I am. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. I'm telling you, you got to get on it. My life is as good as it is because I started going to therapy. I went to therapy when I was a child. That's what a mess I was. I was a child therapist. You can do that here, too. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays today to get 10% off your first month. That's Better, 
H E L P dot com slash Tuesdays. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by DraftKings, baby. Football fans, the first Sunday of the NFL season is here, and DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of, of the NFL, is giving new customers an offer to celebrate the return of the NFL. New customers can bet just five clams and get 200 in free bets instantly. Holy hell. Free money, folks. Uh... As an added bonus for week one, everyone can experience the thrill of DraftKings early win promotion. Here you go. Bet on an NFL team to win. If your team leads by 10 at any point during the game, you get paid instantly, even if your team loses. Holy hell, you got to get on this, folks. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code TUESDAYS to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet this Sunday. That's code TUESDAYS, only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use promo code TUESDAYS. Get on it. West Palm Beach, finish on Saturday night. Two shows, sell merch. We sell out. We take a lot of photos, a lot of gays, a lot of queefs. Get on a plane early the next morning out of West Palm Beach, <whistles> Portland, Maine. Oh, right. One of my favorite cities. My home, sweet home. Really? Well, New England. I go to uh, Portland every year, every summer since I was three. Beautiful town. I always Great heard town. about Portland. It's a jewel. It's a beauty. And I went up there, and it did not disappoint. I always say it's one of America's most underrated cities, although it's gotten a little methy, I think, in the last few years. Ah. But they got some great. They used to have the best comedy club. I'm sure I've talked about it before. Portland Comedy Connection. When I was starting out, was the best club. It was Get like condemned. It was on a wharf, and it was all like warped. It was a warped wharf. Wharf. <laughs> warped wharf. I'm just trying to say that. Warped wharf. Yeah, that ain't easy. That was pretty good. Warped wharf. Halt. Take it for a spin. Warped wharf. Well, you well, gotta you say it fast. What the fuck is this? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Warp dwarf. dwarf. You're really warp sucking dwarf. up all the time oh, you can get. I, it sounds like dwarf. It sounds like dwarf when I say it. It's a warp yeah. dwarf. Yeah. Warp dwarf. But uh, it was hot. It was one of those comedy rooms where they say, like, if you don't do well there, ah, quit comedy. I gotcha. And I would MC and murder. The stage was this high. Wow. And they would pack them in. Legendary room. It was incredible. Wow. How did, did they, people live there? I don't get it. What, 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 what do you think? Like 100,000 people live there yeah. all year? It's a city. Yeah, maybe 100,000. I don't know. But okay. then people would come from around, you know, the surrounding area. Yeah. When I got there, it was a fucking uh, cruise ship pulled up. And all these Canadians come out and buy a bunch of horse shit. Oh, yeah. I took the Scotia Prince there. That's where the terrorists took it. Is that right? The terrorists took it from uh, from Yarmouth, Nova Scotia, down to uh, New Scotland, I think ah, that means. How do you like that? Yeah, I like it a lot. All right, so Portland, Maine, never been there, and uh, you just land that plane. You get out. It's a cute little airport. It's already more fun, and you get to the hotel, and I'm like driving. I'm like in my Uber going, this is adorable. This is so pretty. It's the best. I love it. I long for it. Only one syllable state. More coastline than California. You got that right. And uh, Toothpicks. They call it a jet port for some reason. Um, Portland jet port. That's right. I don't know why. That sounds better, jet port. It's pretty fun. Anytime you get a jet in there, I'm in. Like a black magazine. So I uh, get to Portland, Maine. I'm a little wonky. I'm starting to come out of my rut. Two shows at the Aura. And I go, it's 3 o'clock. My shows are at 8 and 10. And uh, I'm going to walk this whole town for four hours. So I get, I drop my bag off. I take a shit. I jerk it. I go downstairs, and I just walk the wharf. I get a ba- bowl of clam chow. I love that town. Uh, it's one of the best. It's I long for it. It's in my bones. Yes. I love it. A lot of fishermen, a lot of, lot of uh, piers and, and, and restaurants and crabs and whatnot. So I uh, just had a great time. A lot of gays out there, and uh, the shows were killer. One of those magical things where it's like the Bill Burr thing. The first show was good. Second show is magic because you're like, I'm living out of a suitcase. I'm in the middle of Maine. I don't know where the fuck I am. I was in Florida 10 hours ago, and I'm killing. Oh. And it's like, it's just the be- I'm with these strangers I'll never see again, and they had a great time. I had a great time. And I pack up my notes and I leave. Well, this is the thing about Portland is they're hungry for it. When you come, they're grateful. It's so hard. And there was that one venue I did right before pandemic that I was like, this is going to be the spot. I remember telling you about it. I was like, everyone's going to come here. The pandemic ruined it. But 
They're such good crowds. They're the good people, hardworking, blue collar yes. people. They're my people. Good people. And uh, they're just so thrilled if you come there because it's not a stop on any place. No, no stop, no stop. And uh, I'll be back. I mean, that was a humdinger. And we got some drunks in there, but it was all positive and all fun. And pipes. And I got my shit together and I, uh, you know, I left and I had a 6 a.m. flight out of Portland, Oregon, connected in Atlanta, the whole thing. So I'm walking, it's dark, I'm walking through the neighborhood back to my Holiday Inn, and all these people are going, Tuesday, we saw the show, great. Uh, One guy gave me a signed photo of death from Family Guy. Oh. And it's Norm MacDonald signed it. Wow, interesting, because there's been two deaths. That's right, Adam Carolla was the other one. So I'll put that puppy, so thank you, whoever that guy was. And one guy was like, signed my notebook, and he had all these big legendary names in there, so that was fun. And go back to the hotel, get two hours of sleep, wake up, get on a flight, and uh, I had this one. I go to the uh, the desk. How are we doing on time? 48. Oh, oh shit. Geez. I got to wrap this up. Well, we got time. Okay. So I went to the desk, and I go, call me crazy, because everybody's going, hey, there's not a lot of Ubers here. It's Portland, Maine. You know, take it easy. And I'm leaving at 4.30 or whatever. I got to be at the airport at 5. So I go, hey, just can I just get a cab? I need a cab. I don't trust the Uber. And he goes... You know, there's a shuttle leaving with all the uh, airport crew Ooh. at 4:45. Do you Those want that? Are sexy. I was like, I'm in. So I get my shit together. I'm, I'm half in the bag. I'm, I'm sleepy. I get on my shuttle, and it's me and a bunch of Delta queefs. And it's fun. I got the captain in there. I got the flight attendant ladies. Wow. And that was fun. You're like, man, I am really a road guy. You it know? feels real. I mean, do they have the, the heels with the, the whole tight thing. suits, the blue, the purple, and whatever the whip, color the, it is? The hair were done. Like, Ooh. they got, they must have gotten up at three and did the makeup and the wings, the whole thing. Oh. So, go to the airport, <laughs> slip right through, and then fly to Austin, Tejas, land in Texas, go straight to the hotel, and Rogan goes, uh, he's texting all of us, we have a Protect Our Parks uh, thread, Fine. and he goes, you guys all here? You want to see the new club? Ooh. Now, I don't know how much I can divulge, but we're like, sure, why not? I'm on no sleep. I'm all banged up. I'm trying to chug coffee. Don't you hate that, too, where I get to the hotel, Ari and Shane are walking out of the hotel, and they go, let's go to the club. And I go, ah. let me just put the bag up. And you go up to the room, and you're like, I'm in the room. I'm so tired. But I have to go right back down. I know, I know. I know that feeling well. But you sack up. You you, you rally. Went back downstairs. We walked to the comedy club on uh, whatever street. I don't want to give too much away. It's amazing. He's walking us through. It's all these construction guys. He's going, this is going to be the main room. This will be the little room. We're going to lower this ceiling. This stage will come down a foot. And he's like, this is the green room. This is the bar. Like, oh, I can see the whole thing. It's incredible. Oh, God, I can't wait. It's just like this magical room that he's constructing like with years of knowledge of all these comedy clubs. And it's perfection. Wow. And so I, I want to know where it is. I'll tell you. All right. So that was cool. So you're like, wow, you are really like doing something here. And then we go to the studio and uh, we just do the pod and it's a fun one. And we just start drinking and it got a little hairy. Oh, really? You thought the last episode was bananas. We're like, how are we going to top it? Should we play a drinking game? Should we get Rogan in a headlock? Should we fuck him in the ass? What should we do here? And we topped it. Wow. And I don't know how much I can divulge because I don't know what he's going to edit out. Oh, right. Because it's out now. I mean, it, the time it, people are hearing it, it's got to be out. Now it's got to be out. So okay. you'll see for yourself if you haven't seen it already. But uh, Click over there. Get in there. All I'll say is we told him if he doesn't leave this thing in, you're a bitch. Oh, wow. You know? And this is this is like the biggest broadcaster in America. It's basically like having Larry King take a shit on the desk. Like, that's how crazy it was. I remember that episode. Yes. The suspenders were hard to get off. Wow. So, uh, it got wild. And then uh, we, we were all banged up. Uh, Rogan was legless. And we all went to kill Tony after, which was... We went. We did about four and a half hours. What? I don't know how much it'll air. We Jesus. we had a, we had to take a lot out. I mean, we went hard with the language. So then, oh my god, four and a half hours. Tony's tech. Where the fuck are you guys? It's we started at like three. It's like eight something. Oh my god. And we're like we're on our way. And we get all we get to, to the Vulcan. We get on kill Tony and. We tell the story, what happened. We're having a great time. Shane was just on fire. It was bananas. And then 
Rogan shows up. Oh. He must have done some some scoots or some snorts or some something because he was yeehaw. He's back. Well, he's got all. He's got ivermectin and, uh, you know, vitamin F, whatever he's got. He's got a lady down with the gloves, the hot lady with the gloves. The hot lady with a glove, and she does the, the prick and the, the shots and the, 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 the medical stuff. Who knows? And uh, she hit him with a cocktail or something because he was... <laughs> I mean, he was sitting upright and just zigging and zagging, and we had a great night, and uh, then I left there, got on a flight, and came home. Wow, that sounds amazing. Can I ask a dumb question? Please. Where, uh, people are going to that, that guy from the Hot Wings story is going to be like, you're full of shit. Where do you watch Rogan? Is it on YouTube? I, or does Spotify, Spotify have a video? They have video, and YouTube does clips, but it's all Spotify video. So... Uh, I don't use Spotify. I'm an Apple Music guy. Well, it got huge on YouTube first, and then Spotify well, bought it. To I, be so exclusive. I remember that. So Spotify has what do they have a website? Like so a- yeah. So well, they have basically. I, I just found this out recently. Basically, they have like you can go into your your internet browser and go to Spotify.com and watch whatever or listen to whatever. Okay. But most people are watching it on the Spotify app on their phone. Okay. And so so Spotify video. app has a video. It has, yes. Yeah, exactly. It's, almost, it's probably similar to like Apple Podcasts, but it's Spotify and it has video. But there's no longer a YouTube app, but they just take clips and put them just up. Just clips. clips. Okay, I got you. Like your episode has a lot of clips up. Right, yes. So they'll take a chunk like Joe List talks about Jay Leno. Right, right. Whatever. So... Wild, wild night. I haven't consumed that much alcohol in I don't know ten years. Just, just that pouring on whiskey. I drank. I brought Bodega Cat my whiskey and just hocked it the whole time. Oh, that's great. And uh, we just had a hoot and a holler. I think I showed you the video. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was just a magical time. Even Jamie was like, "We have to cut. This is crazy. We have to cut this." And we're like, "No, no, no. Keep it rolling." He's like. I've never seen him like this. This is bad. And we we're like, keep it rolling, you piece of shit. We had to like wow. threaten him. And uh, it was just fucking bananas. And we're just like, this is the biggest show on the planet. I mean, it's insane. So whatever. We do kill Tony. Fun times. We fly back. And here I am in New York. And it's so nice to just be back. We had a crazy month. It's nice to just be back on our schedule. We got the pot out. And Chuck's gay. And uh, just good to be back in a routine. Can I just say real quick about Mr. Rogan, who I love? The, that the day I was at the uh, I talked to it last week at whatever it's called the podcast. Yeah, I had a splitting headache, so I was like, ah, I took some Tylenol. He overhears, he's like, hey, hey, he's at the urinal. He's like, you shouldn't take Tylenol. Ah. Tylenol's bad for your stomach, fucks up your stomach, the liver, the thing. <laughs> and then I talked to you, and he's like, he was hammered. Oh, it was crazy. Yeah. I'm like. Do you think two Tylenol is worse than whatever it is, 47, uh, you know? Yeah, he read an article in eight, 1988, and it stuck with him. I'm like, I, I'll put my two Tylenol up against your uh, whatever. They'll see They'll see uh, the video. Yeah, yeah, you'll see it. Yeah, you'll, you'll see it or you have seen it. But uh, No, you're not wrong. Good stuff. Great app. <laughs> um, Chuck just kicked ass on the Patreon. Yes. You got to go check it out. Condo. When we get to 6,000, we'll do a Tuesdays After Dark. 7,000, we chop off Chuck's head. Yeah. And uh, 9,000, we skull fuck him. Ooh. Um, I got second. So get on the Patreon. And uh, I got uh, Hollywood Improv, September 21st, Wednesday, 730. I got an inside scoop that this thing is. It's funny to say inside. It's my show. Uh-huh. Of course I'm on the inside. But uh, this thing is selling very fast, could sell out. There may be special guests, so get on there. And then Royal Oak, Michigan, uh, September 29th through October 1st. Love Royal Oak. Come to that uh, Comedy Castle. Fill that up. And then I'm coming to Madison in December, my favorite club ever. Uh, Hartford Funny Bone coming up, Syracuse Funny Bone. These are all on ComedianJoeList.com. And go check out the special. Get that algorithm going. Yeah. This year's material, I Hate Myself, both on YouTube. Hell Yeah. All right, this weekend I'm at the Richmond Funny Bone. And we're Brea Improv after that. Bakersfield, too, for two shows. San Jose Improv, Danforth Theater in Toronto, Orlando Improv, back to Florida. The Rococo Theater. Where the hell's that? Rococo? Yeah. Boca Raton? No, give that a Google, will you, Chuck? R-O-C-O-C-O. Rococo. Uh, I'm going to put down the Pantages in... Uh, Lincoln, Nebraska? Yeah. Oh, and the Englert Theater. See where that is. E-N-G-L-E-R-T. I'm agreeing to everything, folks. So that's Lincoln, Nebraska. I think Iowa this might City. Be Iowa City. Hey, I'm wearing a you know, Iowa shirt. Oh, there, there you go. You go. No, no affiliation. 
Revolution Hall in Portland, uh, Neptune Theater, Seattle, Phony Bone, Albany, Zanies in Nashville, all kinds of wacky dates. Check out the Patreon. Get on it. We got a lot of fun stuff. And uh, get a mug. Thanks, gang. Thanks, gang.